Hi, this is George Alger with another segment of Our Ventura TV. And today I'm speaking with Bob Crum, who is a local Ventura County photojournalist. Welcome, Bob. Hi, George. Now, Bob, I know you've been shooting all over the country, but you've been actually working in uh, Ventura County for some time. How long have you been shooting in, in D.C.? About 12 years. Okay. Yeah. And is that about the same amount of time you've been living here? 14 years now. Wow. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, let's talk about how you've made this evolution into being a, a photojournalist. Started in Florida. Um, the Everglades, Big Cypress, outdoors person. Um, Florida, of course, has a lot of transit people from the north. Didn't know about the Everglades, didn't know anything about Big Cypress and whatnot. Being familiar with it, I started writing about it in our local magazines from West Palm Beach down to the Florida Keys. And of course, the local magazine didn't particularly want to have a writer and a photographer that's paying two people, so they asked me to just start taking photos. And it all evolved into becoming a photojournalist. Cool. And from there, uh, I was given a, an opportunity to join the Southern Star Magazine as associate editor. And that incurs, in, entailed a lot of traveling around the Bahamas, uh, shooting tournaments, et cetera, and writing the, the stories accordingly. So it got to involve a lot of travel, meet a lot of interesting people like you. Uh, so it's been, it's been an evolving process all along. Good life. It is. And then when I landed in Fillmore, there, was, there were two papers, actually, the Fillmore Herald and the Fillmore Gazette, and they were, of course, rivalries. Um, I was approached by the publisher of the Fillmore Gazette, who offered me a better opportunity than the, the competition. So I've been loyal ever since for shooting for the special events for the Fillmore Gazette. Good. Now, photography is something dear to many people's hearts, and of course, as the you know the years have evolved, where everyone has a you know a camera even in their phone that they have with them at all times, photography is pretty you know pretty common everywhere. What would be some of the characteristics that you might say are unique to being a photojournalist? First, I want to touch on that uh, okay. photography thing, yeah. which can sometimes I understand. Everybody today seems to have an iPhone of some some sort iPad, whatever, it, it is becoming troublesome only this, in this regard, in that those of us working in the profession now have to compete with all these people also trying to get the same shot. Uh. And so anyway, it's, it's a photography, I sometimes tell people is not allowed here, <laughs> and I get some unusual looks. But um, photography for photojournalism is a little bit different in that you have to foresee how a photo will fit with what you're going to write about. So you visualize the story, and it's unfolding as you're doing this. Uh, for example, the livestock auction, junior livestock auction at the fair, which was the most recent assignment. Um, you're, you're shooting for the article, and you know that you want the, the story, the photo to tell a story in its own right. The context has to be there. In, in a photo that I, that I particularly like is, is the girl with her pig. The, the auctioneer is gesturing. Um, the whole story is told in one image. And, and of course, then I interview each of the other participants, and that's the story. But shooting for photojournalism is a little different than what I love to do also, which is landscapes and waterscapes and so forth, because you have to constantly be aware that you're tying the photo with a story. And it's, it's not always easy to do. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, um, you know, on this livestock uh, photo that you mentioned at the fair, I mean, I know that's just challenging from the perspective that you've got an animal who isn't necessarily going to look at you and smile at the moment that you would need him to do to do so. So exactly. I imagine agriculture or animals in general are its, are its own specialized art form. It is, and and there's also aspects of contrast and color to get the animal to to appear natural against uh, flesh tones of people. There, there's a lot of trickery that goes on, and, and digital is not always cooperative either. It's a, but uh, when it all comes together, I call it serendipity. Oh, yeah. 
Now so, let me make sure I got this right. So you, you sort of came into photography through writing. Is that how yes. I got that? Okay. Yes. So your would you say that your um, your I don't know is, is writing still a primary passion in life? Not as much as photography. Okay. So it changed um, then. It changed. It, I I became well be, because of the of the lands the love of the outdoors. Um, there there's a different aspect of photography than the writing. The writing can sometimes be a little difficult, a little more laborious than, than the photography. And not that there weren't challenges with photography. Um, the, the writing is a necessary uh, aspect of my livelihood, but if I had a preference, it would be just photography. But the two together is, is now becoming sort of a, uh, what separates us from, photography is becoming very competitive. Um, today's equipment is so good, including iPhones, that it's not difficult for somebody to go out and get a good shot. It's a lot more difficult to write an article, a story associated with that photo. And so that gives me a little bit more of an edge than all the, the plethora of photographers. Okay. So I don't, I don't object to the writing, but it's not my favorite. All right. My passion is photography. Now, since you have been shooting for, you know, a couple of decades now, yeah. speak about the transition from film to digital from your own experience. I resisted vehemently. I was probably, of, uh, of the friends that I have that are in, in the photography circle, I was the last to part with my film camera. Um, because there was the, the, the computer aspect and the software aspect, I was used to the chemicals and, the, and, the, and developing the prints, and there was, there was some magic in that that, you, that just didn't seem to, to be there in the, in the digital. Um, but when I did make that transition, I had to make it cold. I had to sell my camera equipment. It's like I used to smoke, and it was difficult until I went cold turkey. I had to do the same thing with the with the mm -hmm. film camera. Sell it, get rid of it, get digital. I can't now pick up that that film camera. And I was forced then to learn the transition into the software to to post process these new digital images. Now I wouldn't pick up a film camera if you <laughs> paid me a lot of money. Wow. Yeah. Well, is there any tips that you might give to photographers, particularly new photographers, whether they're shooting on a, you know, a smartphone or they're picking up a digital camera for the first time? But you know, if you've got years and years of experience. What would be one or two, or, or more if you wish, but a couple of points that you could make to someone to help them improve their photography? I think in general, what I see that the most, the biggest mistake most people make is generalizing too much in their photos, not focusing on the particular subject of, the, of an image, not being able to visualize in their minds what it is that they're going to have a viewer see. And, and uh, I, it's difficult that, to understand how you have to zero in mind-wise even though you can crop later, et cetera, it's, it's not quite the same. Most people are, there's, there's, a, there's a subject and then there's all the scenery around it and it's too generalized. I see that even with wedding photographers. They, they include the chapel when, when the subject is really the bride and the groom kissing at that moment. That should have been the full frame. And the chapel is totally immaterial in the background. That's, that's generally what I see a lot of people doing. And the rest of it is really knowing the camera. Um, who reads who reads tech manuals anymore? The, the operator's manual, but but knowing the camera and its limitations as well helps you get the right exposure, the, make the, def, the the decisions to whether you want uh, increased depth of field or or bouquet in the background. Knowing these things takes a lot of practice. You gotta pay the dues. Practice, practice, practice. Shoot, 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 shoot. When I go out on a weekend just practicing and shooting landscapes, I'm shooting sometimes six, seven, eight hundred shots, most of which are not going to be any good, but I'm learning the process, always constantly learning the process and learning the camera, learning its limitations. And then eventually everything becomes second nature and you get your shots. 
Yeah, I can definitely appreciate the emphasis on the doing, on actually going out and shooting. But would you, would you suggest um, that someone take a course or read books, or, you know, if they really wanted to learn more about it? What would be a path you might think would be most productive? Can't argue against taking a good photo course. Um, that's your, that's a good foundation. There are today a lot of excellent books, um, and specific books on cameras, to, to begin with. And then, depending on what genre one wants to go into, whether it's shoot landscapes, whether she's weddings or um, pet photography or whatever, there are a lot of experts out there that are sharing their expertise, and it's a good way to lay the foundation. And once that's in place, pick up the camera, shoot. Cool. Yep. All right, well, we're kind of winding down the program here, but I wanted to see if there was any summating message or notes of encouragement that you would like to offer others who are trying to figure out what the heck to do with their camera, you know, who are new to photography. I think half the problem is just the camera. The other half is in the post-processing, and I think that's what intimidates a lot of people. I see that frequently. Post-processing is the important half. I look at it this way. The camera takes the picture. I create the image. And that creation happens in post-processing. It's in the software. The tools are tremendous that we have today, from Photoshop to, to Lightroom and, it's just, and all the plugins that you can use in Lightroom and in Photoshop. The potential to create an image, to project an emotion, is, is, is unlimited today. So it's not just picking up a camera and taking a photo. The camera is nothing but a computer to hang a lens on. Once you learn how to do that, that's, a, that's only half the, 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 the project. Coming home, unloading into the computer, and then creating that image, see, see it, visualize it in front of you. Pleasure. Cool, now you brought up an interesting point here. So all of these photographs that get published in the, in the local newspapers, are you saying that all your work, including your personal stuff that you hang, um, all of this work goes through post-processing? I mean, none of your work, is, would you say, is just, um, just as, it, as it is coming out of the camera? No, it's all post-processing. Okay. I'll, I'll go so far as to say this, and this may, this may agitate some people out there who are the, the purists, if you will. They're, they're, they're those who are the proponents of the realistic photograph. First of all, the camera is, is a computer that you hang a lens onto. It's a linear process that's converted to digital. There's manipulation that's happened there already in the camera. Out of the camera, now I, my camera is set up for everything to be neutral. I don't emphasize color saturation. I don't, I don't emphasize contrast. None of this is emphasized in the camera. I want that control in the post process. What if there's too much contrast in the camera? I can't uncontrast or decontrast that in post process. I can increase contrast. So knowing the limitations, I see, is a, is a big plus again. So yes, it's post-process. Plus, the human eye can see a dynamic range of, of about 12. The camera is only about six. So when I, when I know that a, a, a person is going to be illustrated in a, in a newspaper article or a magazine, the face is important. Well, what if the lighting wasn't such that the camera didn't depict that face properly. I have to fix it in post-process. That person then looks perfect and is published and, and of course everybody's happy. So it's post-processing is, is crucial it's, it, but it's also enjoying it. When, take an artist with a, with a canvas and they're going through the laborious process of meticulating all the little strokes with the paintbrush. I'm doing the same thing with my sliders and, and software. Yeah. Okay, I'm creating that image on the monitor as an artist would on the on the palette of canvas. No difference, well except said. in the technology. Well said. Well, Bob, I have to thank you now because we do have to wrap up our show. But it's been a pleasure, and thank you very much for all this info. Thanks for the invitation, George. Appreciate right. being there. Good. And this is George Alger signing off for another show of Our Ventura TV. Until we see you again.